Welcome back, everyone. My name is Dan Vega, and I'm a Spring Developer Advocate at VMware. Today, we're going to be taking a look at GitHub Code Spaces, which is blazing fast cloud developer environments. So we're going to do this in the context of Spring. I want to create a new Spring Boot 3 project using Java 17. And just full transparency, I've already done this. I did this yesterday, and then I tweeted out a screenshot of this, and I got a lot of reactions to it. So I thought I'd go ahead and create a video around it. So we'll dive into the documentation for GitHub Code Spaces really quick, just kind of take a look at it. We'll create a new Spring Boot 3 project uh, using Java 17, uh, just a very basic uh, single REST controller that says, hello, Code Spaces. We'll commit that to Git in GitHub, and then we'll go into GitHub and create a code space and see how we can use Visual Studio here in the cloud. So again, this is Visual Studio code backed by high performance VMs that start in seconds. Just a, a beautiful website here, as GitHub always does. Uh, uh, CPUs up to 32 cores, memory up to 64 gigabytes, um, the, po the full power of Visual Studio code, faster than your laptop, uh, standardized dev environments. This is really cool if you have a dev team that can kind of just jump into a code space and not have to worry about like configuring everything. That's really cool. Uh, you get a browser preview and port forwarding. So if we want to go ahead and make this public and let everybody else see it, we can. Uh, everything that you would expect from Visual Studio Code, like your themes and your plugins or extensions. And um, GitHub builds with code spaces. Uh, this is a premium feature. You do have to pay for it. Uh, so you can see the pricing model here. And again, this is in private beta still, I think. I just finally got accepted to it. I think I signed up for it a long, long time ago, maybe as long as a year ago. Um, but I'm not sure about that. So, uh, so that is kind of the thousand foot overview of GitHub Code Spaces. So if we go into getting started, there's a really good video here that you can walk through. Um, there's really good documentation here on how to get started. Uh, really. Uh, I think the biggest thing is, you know, if you're going to be using this all the time, definitely understand the billing and what this means for your organization. Um, if you're going to use this in an organization or a team, really look into the introduction for dev containers because that'll be important. But for us, we're just going to do a simple project. There is some um, example projects that you can use. Uh, there are some guides. But we're just going to get started by heading over to start.spring.io. And we're going to create a brand new 3.0 project. I'm going to use Snapshot. I'm using Java and Maven. Uh, we'll go ahead and say Dan Vega. We'll say hello, code spaces. And we're going to use Java 17. The only dependency that we really need for this is web. So I'm going to go ahead and click Generate. And I'll open this up in my favorite IDE, IntelliJ, and I will see you over there. All right, so here we are in IntelliJ. I'm going to go ahead and create a new Java class, and we'll call this uh, Hello Controller. This is going to be a REST controller. So we'll go ahead and say REST controller. And we're just going to create a single method here. This is going to have a Git mapping. Uh, so this will point to the root context, and we'll say that we're just going to return a string, and we're going to return hello code spaces. So that's it. Very simple application. Uh, we don't need anything complex for what we're going to kind of look at today. So now what I want to do is in, in IntelliJ, you can go ahead and share this project on GitHub. So I'm going to say that this is Hello Code Spaces. Uh, looking for my account. Hello Code Spaces. I want to go ahead and share this on GitHub. And this is our initial commit. So we're just committed, and now we have a project on GitHub. So let's jump over to that. All right, so here we are in the repository. So once you have a repository in place, I can go over to this code tab, and usually you see this local tab. You'll see um, the SSH or the HTTPS URL. There is a code spaces tab. So now what I can do is go ahead and create a code space on master. So this is by default going to create a four core, eight gigabyte, or a four core, eight gigabyte RAM. 
uh, on our master. So you could configure and create this a little bit different. Like if you wanted to get into some advanced options, we're just going to use this uh, basic one here today. So this is going to go ahead and set up our application. Uh, you can open this code space in VS Code Desktop. So if I wanted to work on my desktop, but use the kind of full power of the cloud, I could. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to use it in the browser. I like this. Um, it's going to go ahead and say what my project looks like. Uh, yes, I want to install the Java extension. Now, again, this is where some of those other settings come into place. Those dev containers, we can kind of set up you know, what extensions, what themes might be available. Um, so I have Java there. And what I'm going to do is, let's see if this is still going. So it's configuring code space, press any key to exit. And there we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is just come in here and go to my Hello Controller. Um, actually, I'm going to go to my main application class. Uh, I could go ahead and run this. I'm going to run this using the Maven wrapper. So I'm going to say uh, Maven because I chose Maven as my build tool. And I'm just going to run Spring Boot colon run. And this will go ahead and run our application. So this is the first time we're running it. We're going to have to download any dependencies that we might need for this app. All right, so your application is running on port 8080 is available. So our port forwarding is working. This is just a bunch of other things coming up. And here it says we can go ahead and open in browser. So now I open this in the browser and you can see hello code spaces. So I have uh, a unique URL here that I can go ahead and share out with other people. Uh, so again, pretty cool here. So this is again, now you're in the browser here, we can just kind of make changes to this. So let's say one, two, three, and I'll just go ahead and run this again. And now that we've already run it once, our dependencies are all there. This should start up a lot faster. And again, we're using Spring Boot 3.0 uh, and Java 17. So I wonder if this is the same URL as that one. It didn't start up yet, and there it is. Is that the same? Yeah, same one. So cool. Um, again, not much to it. Uh, now you can go ahead and take this and you can uh, develop this in the cloud. So if you have a machine that's not performing great, this is an option. If you're, like I said, uh, you could be on the road, maybe your work machine isn't as good as your home machine. You know, there are a bunch of different scenarios for this. I don't know where I'm going to use this, but it's just really cool to see that, you know, there wasn't much to this. I just kind of clicked a button. I got this nice environment set up for me. I could configure it later if I wanted to kind of increase um, the power of this, uh, you know, code space. Uh, but it was just really easy to get set up. And hey, guess what? It supports Java and it supports Spring Boot uh, 3.0. So that was pretty cool to see. So I think we'll leave it at that. I would love to hear in the comments below if you've had a chance to try Code Spaces. If you have, let me know what your initial thoughts are. If you haven't, is this something that you might be using in your everyday development? Let me know about that. So as always, uh, I really hope you found some value in this. If you did, please go ahead and leave me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And as always, friends, happy coding. Yeah.